And now, Your Prayer Intentions with author Peter and Jimmy. Hello and welcome to Your Prayer Intentions. We're very happy to spend the next half hour with some thought, with some prayer, and with some, well, not quite interviews, but some recordings from the uh, One Day Retreat. Here as we pray for Your Prayer Intentions. want to point out again that if you have a prayer request that you want to get to us, you can email us at WQPH893 at Comcast.net. That's WQPH893 at Comcast.net. You can also post them on the WQPH Radio prayer wall at WQPHradio.org slash prayer wall. And I'd also like to point out that if we don't have it already on our site, we will soon have a playlist a video from the one day retreat that I recorded. I actually have it the playlist currently at my personal site, the Tech Eye Blogs channel on YouTube. But we're going to link to that on the WQPH site so you'll be able to see some of the videos and so forth that we shot on the day. Uh gonna get to some of the prayer requests. We're not gonna get to all the prayer requests from the uh the one day retreat because there were so many. And because my son has some, and he's actually on a personal retreat, so I can't get them from his phone right now, because he got some when I couldn't. But I do want to jump right into an audio from that retreat, which is Father Augustine's homily from the retreat mass. It runs a little long, so I want to get to it right away before we get to the prayer requests to make sure we have time for everything. So without further ado, this is Father Augustine who said the Mass and let's pray us at the uh, WQPH retreat at Still River. This is his homily from the Mass, from the retreat. Here is Father Augustine. In the Gospel today, Jesus said to be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Yes, the devil is much stronger and smarter than we are, and he is planning our destruction. But fear of the Lord is very different. It is a gift of the Holy Spirit, a, re a re reverential fear of God, a fear of, of offending God, who is planning our eternal happiness with him. But then our Lord said, even all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. We should have great confidence, of course, in our Lord, as we know that he can raise up both soul and body. Today we honor Our Lady on Saturday. How consoling it is to also have a spiritual mother, God's mother, our Blessed Mother, to run to when because of our weakness we do get afraid. Our Lord continued, Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my Heavenly Father. I don't think it is too much of a stretch to say that Mary could say a similar thing Whoever acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Son. We look to Our Lady always for guidance, inspiration, protection, and love. But to, again, our Lord said, fear no one. Now that counsel can be hard to follow sometimes, especially when our beliefs are challenged. The grace of the sacraments, however, gives us supernatural strength in times of fear. And we must pray for the gifts of the Holy Spirit, such as fortitude, which gives us courage in times of adversity, when our faith, our beliefs, our morals are challenged. As one commentator states, we too have to make Christ's doctrine known in its entirety, without any ambiguity, without being influenced by false prudence or fear of the consequences. 
Yes, we all too often fear the consequences. We should fear the consequences of sin, which can send us to hell. Today's Gospel passage is part of a larger discourse where our Lord is telling his apostles, You will be dragged before kings and governors for my sake as a witness before them. So when our Lord says, Fear no one, he is referring to earthly rulers and earthly powers. That is not the same as saying, Fear nothing. Our Lord said to be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. We have a natural as well as a supernatural fear of the devil. Our instincts tell us he is not a friend of ours. He's not looking out for our welfare. He is very cunning and powerful. He knows how to tempt us and exploit our weaknesses. He helps us to sin. And so we must fear sin and all sin, but especially serious sin, mortal sin, which will send us to hell if we don't repent and seek God's forgiveness. But we are to have a reverential fear of God, as I said. That is the gift of the Holy Spirit, to fear the Lord. He is our ultimate judge who will number us either among his sheep or among the goats. Or, as the and those goats who are on his left will not be in heaven rejoicing but will be with the devil in hell. St. Augustine said, The body is dead without the soul, and the soul is dead without God. You who bewail the dead, rather should bewail sin, ungodliness, and disbelief. Well, we've all experienced that there is a lot of sin, ungodliness, and disbelief in our society. We need to recognize and acknowledge this wherever we see it. In this same discourse, our Lord said to his disciples, You must be wise as serpents and simple as dogs. Another commentator states, we must sharpen our own spiritual survival skills. Christ wants his followers to be as resourceful as serpents, not in some deceitful or underhanded way, as the devil wants us to be, but we must witness to Christ in the truths of his gospel, in the concrete circumstances of our daily lives. The inspiration to do these things and so much more can only come from God through the working of the Holy Spirit. This is our source of confidence. God is with us, and he will instruct us and direct us, just as he instructed his own disciples. So our rule of faith, rather our rule of life, must be our faith, the truths of our faith, and living those truths. And that is being made more difficult these days, not only by the secular rulers, but even, unfortunately, by some clergymen, some bishops who are inconsistent, to put it kindly, in the ongoing theological differences and scandals of one sort or another, which are not going away, but unfortunately causing ongoing confusion. In the midst of growing confusion, not only in society, but even in the church, we need even more prayer and sacrifice. 
the status quo is no longer good enough. I'm reminded of that gospel scene where the apostles were unable to cast out a demon. Our Lord comes over and of course he casts out the demon and privately tells the apostles that this kind can only be cast out by prayer and fasting. There is much evil that needs to be cast out of our world and our church. It is a challenge to all of us to move to the next level in our spiritual practices. In addition to receiving the sacraments as often as we can, the most powerful means of grace. We have all experienced the power of the Rosary of Our Lady, which has proven to be such a powerful spiritual weapon to weaken the devil and to strengthen us in the face of evil. History shows this, history proves this. Just a few examples that are well known to all of us. The Battle of Lepanto and the Battle of Vienna, when all of Christendom was in great danger and needed a miracle. Our Lady came through when the faithful did their part. Our Lady will not fail us, but in her apparitions of the last few centuries, she has pleaded with us to do our part. Prayer and penance, prayer and penance, over and over again is what Our Lady has asked for. That has been her message in a nutshell. In times of uncertainty, confusion, fear, we must keep praying and increase our praying. We look for ways to make extra little sacrifices, any little things we can do, as the Catholic saying is, to offer up our, pray, our pains, our sufferings. Give them to our Lord, and He will know how to use them for greater good. We are asked to bear our crosses, to go forward with confidence and hope, knowing that our Lord is there to strengthen us. An increase in prayer will bring the increase in strength. So we must come and receive the sacraments even more often. Only supernatural grace can change hearts and minds. Not yelling and threats and destruction. So this is advice for protesters, non-protesters, and everyone else in between. In the aftermath, especially, of the Supreme Court decision overturning Roe versus Wade. Threats and violence don't accomplish your objective. Only the grace of God can convert hearts and minds. So we continue to do that and increase our prayers, our sacrifices. We come here to worship our Lord, to receive the King of Peace. We are strengthened to go forth and to fear no one. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. May we continue all throughout the day and every day to remember and repeat our opening prayer for today's Mass. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that your faithful, who rejoice under the patronage of the Most Holy Virgin Mary, may be freed by her motherly intercession from all evils on earth and merit the attainment of eternal joys in heaven. Amen. Amen. And that was Father Augustine's homily from the July 9th One Day Retreat that WQPH sponsored at Still River. And a greeting, of course, to all of you who were listening, who were at that retreat that I met. We'll have more audio from the retreat over the next several weeks on this show. 
Plus, we'll have some of it at the WQPH website that I recorded and that my son recorded. Although some of the audio that I recorded was lost. I had some computer issues, unfortunately. But we will play more of that as we get along. Now let's get to some prayer requests and get to some praying. Okay. Now, before we begin again, we're going to, we're going to offer for our standard prayer requests, the ongoing ones for Nancy, for Mary Lotz, for the uh, pastors and priests of our listening area, Shirley Fitchburg, uh, for the intentions of the Dominican Sisters of St. Cecilia, and for a gentleman who's been having some long-term COVID issues. We offer as for those. Like to also offer prayers for the Brisbane family, who we Joe, one of the two brothers that we've been praying for. One has died, the other is now currently in rehab, and we wish him a recovery and we pray for him. Uh, we have some prayer requests from the event, and as I said, we're going to be doing some of them this week and some of them next week because there's a lot of them. Okay, first we uh, have a prayer request for a daughter who's getting married soon, and congratulations as well, obviously. We have a prayer request for spiritual and physical healing for oneself. We have a prayer request for a mother named Lubica. She has pleural infusion, which is like water among the lungs, and a prayer for spiritual healing and physical strength. I have a prayer request for Marine Capistan's health, and that actually cuts to the bone because I went to one of her uh, events in Upton. Uh, this week, and she was, went to each person at the event after the Mass and prayed over each person. If you get a chance, you want, want to go down. And she spent, uh, it was hours, and all I could think of was the scene from uh, The Chosen, where at the end of season two, where Christ comes in tired from his, literally spending all day healing people, and he's just exhausted and goes to his tent, and the Blessed Mother runs to her. And so I, let's pray for Maureen's health because there's a there's a lot of physical effort involved in what she does. Okay, we also have a prayer request for Marianne White. Happy to pray for her. A prayer request for the health and healing of Heidi from a cancer diagnosis. We have a prayer request not from the uh, event for Fernando. We'll pray for him today. And a prayer request for Diane. We have a prayer request. Of course, we'd like to pray for Mary Ann from the radio station and her husband. Her husband has had some illness. We have a prayer request for Sylvia and Sylvia's friend. Very happy to pray for both of them. Have a prayer request for someone who's looking for a new job. Actually, I know two people looking looking for career changes, so I'll, I'll add that other person I know in addition to the person who requested that thing. Uh, prayer request for... A couple that is moving, moving to a new state, a new job, and so forth. And so, prayer request they were able to get through things all right. And, of course, we pray for all the donors to WQPH, and, and we give you our thanks. Thank you so much for all you do and those who have prayed for us. So, we thank you for those prayers, which are as valuable as the cash. And a special prayer request for the um, brothers at the Abbey, at Still River, and for their prayer requests as well. Oh, and a, we have a prayer request also from a uh, person in the cemetery for his formation as a priest. So, since we uh, talked about these events, we're going to pray the third mystery of light, which is the proclamation of the kingdom of heaven. So let's begin our prayers as we begin all of our prayers in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The third mystery of light is the proclamation of the kingdom of heaven. We offer thee, Lord Jesus, this eighth decade in honor of the proclamation of the kingdom of heaven. And we ask of thee, through this mystery and through the intercession of thy holy mother, to recognize the works of the kingdom of heaven all around us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls into heaven, especially those who are most in need of thy mercy. May the grace and mystery of the proclamation of the kingdom of heaven come down to our souls. Amen. And now these are the prayers for those of you following the indulgence calendars. These are for the intentions of the Holy Father and the intentions of the Pope Emeritus as well. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of death. Amen. Our Father, what in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust and tail Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And we pray this as we pray everything. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I want to mention one thing before we get to our final prayers. Some of you might wonder why I put on the homily just as one piece, because it's so long and took up a lot of the show. And I think it's important because, you know, yes, I've written a book on the Hail Mary. Yes, I've been doing this show for a while. Yes, I'm a mass-going Catholic and a cradle Catholic and so forth. But I'm not a priest. I'm not trained in this stuff the way a priest is. And although hopefully I can give you some good insights that will be helpful to the soul, I can't do it the way a priest can. So a homily like that is something really worthwhile. Now let's go to our closing prayers in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God of mercy, as we reach out to those seeking you, send forth your Holy Spirit upon this show, upon this station, upon the station as a carry it, and upon all those who listen to renew us in faith. Enable us to share the good news of the gospel with loving words and caring deeds so that those who have drifted away may be drawn to your church and follow the way of your Son Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the light. We make our prayer through Jesus our Lord. Amen. And pray it in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For all of us at WQPH and your prayer intentions, I want to say thank you for listening, and we will be back next week to pray for more of your prayer intentions. Take care and God bless. On the WQPH community calendar. If you get a chance, swing down to St. Bernard's Parish at St. Camilla's Church Mechanic Street in Fitchburg, and at the entrance, there are envelopes with the names of bishops, and we, we talked about adopt a bishop. There are prayer cards and stuff that you can grab so that you can adopt a bishop to pray for. They're sitting there right at the entrance of the church. If you walk in, you look to the right just before the confessional, they're on a little table. So if you want to do the adopt a bishop, go down to the church there, get an envelope, get the prayer cards, and adopt a bishop to pray for. Country needs your prayer.
prayers and the bishops who are going to shepherd us through this time, no matter how this time ends, are going to need it more because they're going to be the ones who will help us to get to where we need to go as the princes of Christ. So go down there and, get, and grab one and adopt a bishop or just pray for a bishop on your own. This is Peter and Jemmy, host of Your Prayer Intentions, every Saturday here on 89.3 WQPH Shirley Fitchburg. Do you have a prayer request that you'd like me to pray for or perhaps the whole community? Well, include that prayer request in an email. Specify if you want it on air or off and email that prayer request to WQPH893 at Comcast.net. Let me repeat that. It's WQPH893 at Comcast.net. And we will pray for you. If you have an urgent request that you're looking for immediate prayer, tweet me directly at the Tech Guy blog on Twitter or the Tech Guy blog on Gab. God bless you.